Somebody once said of Hector Camacho that he loves himself so much he wants to die in his own arms. <laughs> Here's the ring record for Camacho. 64 wins, three losses, one draw. The losses to Greg Haugen in 1991, later avenged. Julio Cesar Chavez in 92, Felix Trinidad in 94. He has never been knocked down or out. He's only had 32 KOs of his own, although in recent fights, his power output has actually been going up a little bit. Oscar De La Hoya's record, 25 wins, no losses, no draws, 21 by knockout, two consecutive 12-round decisions earlier this year against Miguel and Hel Gonzalez and then Bernal Whitaker. Then he fired the trainer, hired Emmanuel Stewart, brought back his old buddy Robert Alcazar, scored a second round knockout over David Kamau. So get ready now for East Los Angeles against Harlem, Mexico against Puerto Rico, Oscar De La Hoya against Hector Macho Camacho. Ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Palace, the home of champions here in Las Vegas, Nevada, Top Rank Incorporated, Mike Aikri Promotions, in association with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser, this buds for you, present the featured bout of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Welterweight Championship of the World. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission and the World Boxing Council. Nevada Chairman Dr. Elias Ghanem, Executive Director Mark Rapner, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Lorenzo Pertita, Luther Mack, and Dr. James Nave. Physicians at ringside, Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. Robert Voy, Dr. James Wish Game, and Dr. Al Capana. Your timekeepers at the bell, keeping time and counting for the knockdown seconds, are Al Bicek and Mike Lachella, WBC President Jose Suleiman, WBC Supervisor at ringside Mauricio Suleiman. The three judges assigned to score this bout, scoring on a 10-point must system are Chuck Jampa, Anek Hongtongkong, and John Keen. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Richard Steele. And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing black, trimmed with red, and weighing in at exactly 147 pounds. 
His professional record stands at 64 victories, 32 by knockout with only three defeats and one draw. In almost two decades of competition, he has captured five world titles. He's undefeated in his last 21 consecutive bouts. And tonight, he comes to the ring ready to show the world that his time, macho time, has arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, from Bayoman, Puerto Rico, here is the five-time world champion, the challenger, Hector Macho. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold and weighing also exactly 147 pounds. In 1992, he captured Olympic gold. And now as a professional, with a perfect record of 25 victories, 21 knockouts without a loss, he has captured the hearts of boxing fans around the world. This to go with his four world titles. Tonight, he plans on victory to maintain his recognition as pound for pound, one of the best there is in the world today. Ladies and gentlemen, from East LA, presenting the four-time world champion and reigning undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La Structure in your dressing room. I'm cautioning again, obey my commands at all times. Shake hands, good luck. Jim, we don't know if Hector Camacho is just famous for being famous these days or whether he truly can fight on this highest level of the game. We're about to find out. I'm looking up to the sky, Oscar De La Hoya. I think maybe he was paying some attention to his mother. Yes, every single fight. During referee's instructions, De La Hoya looking skyward in honor of his mother, Teresa. Or Cecilia, I should say. Passed away uh, just before he won his gold medal at Barcelona in 92. Round one begins. De La Hoya trying to throw a left hook and missing with it. But he lands the left hook and momentarily stuns Camacho. De La Hoya saying to us, I want to attack from the get-go. I want to throw a hundred punches around. And he's attacking with fury right now, if not necessarily with discipline. But he hurt Camacho. Camacho, you could see, was stunned momentarily, and he's stunned again. Camacho knocked down once in his career by Sergio Reyes back in Atlantic City, 1988. If memory serves me correctly, Jim, that was also a first round stunning punch that he wasn't ready for. He went on to win the fight by decision. And here he's been stunned twice in the first round by left hooks. And part of the significance of that, De La Hoya was never really able to get the left hook going in his previous matchup with the southpaw against Whitaker. He's landed two of them here. Hard left hand to the body by De La Hoya. Camacho grabs and holds. The De La Hoya contingent in the crowd immediately booing. De La Hoya telling us, I think Camacho's going to grab me a lot from the outside. I've been working on uppercuts to take advantage of it. De La Hoya is starting to swing his punches from the outside. And you, uh, Camacho can live with that. But that straight right hand down the middle, no one can live with that by De La Hoya. Well, let's see if De La Hoya goes to the straight right hand, which is the way most fighters attempt to attack the southpaw. Great, step back, step back. So far, Oscar's been trying to use the left. Wide winging left hooks. Straight right hand lands for De La Hoya. He goes into a power punch explosion along the ropes. Macho has been attacked misused like this before. 
He's able to weather certain storms like this. But that Delahoya has a right hand like I've never seen before in that weight class. Really? So you admire his right that much? Right. In that weight class, you just don't uh, you just don't see them every day. Uh huh. It's not done with the shoulders. That's so a fighter watching your shoulders can still get hit because the power is in his hand. Great right hand up the middle, a little bit short. De La Hoya scratched out just enough against Whitaker, throwing right hands one at a time to earn the decision on the Time. scorecard. Camacho taunting De La Hoya as round one comes to a close. I'm not sure what reason he felt he had to, to taunt him. Need to relax. Need to relax, okay? You're okay. Need to relax. Got to hold that ground. He's coming hard, but he's coming tall. And you're standing right up at with him too we want to stay short okay if he wants to come hard you've got to get down a little bit lower stay short he'll run into the left hand you're overextending it a little too much his, his head is right here and you're shooting it long okay here we see here we see how Della Oya came out fast he is determined to put hurt on Camacho in a hurry and he hurt him later in the round again we did not see Camacho doing what he said he would do, which would be to stand and fight and try to hurt De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya did not sit down between rounds. Didn't even have a stool brought into the corner. That's quite unusual. We haven't seen it before. You'll note that George Foreman has done it throughout the latter part of his career. In the first round, Camacho by CompuBox numbers threw 60 punches and landed only three. No. De La Hoya threw 52 right. punches. Stop. 48 Stop. of them were power shots. Keep them in front. So he dispenses Keep them in front. with the left jab from the beginning. This time, Camacho comes out a little more aggressively in round two. There's an old saying, when you build a house, you count the couch first. Camacho understood that he would be rattled and had some, have some hard punches laid on his chin. Don't jump, don't jump, but that jump. goes in with the price of the house. And he came right back, sticking his right jab out. A moment ago, you asked why would uh, Macho taunt him. I remember hitting Muhammad Ali so hard, I knew it should have hurt. And after the round was over, he looked at me as if to say, ha ha, didn't get me. But when I sat down, I didn't laugh. Great. That was the first hard punch that I saw Camacho throwing a left hand partially blocked by Della Oil. Emmanuel Stewart tells us from the, the uh, De La Hoya corner that De La Hoya's decision not to sit down at the end of round one was an impulse, nothing pre-planned. He simply got back to the corner and said, I don't want to stool, I don't want to sit down. Left uppercut sends Camacho flying again. Well, when you're fighting a young fighter like De La Hoya, you want to make sure he start doing a lot of things he ordinarily would not do. Don't sit on the stool, drop your hand, turn anything to make that young fella get out of his game plan. Macho is 35. These old warriors can think. And it goes without saying that De La Hoya takes a certain chance if he expends a lot of energy in the first two or three rounds, swinging wildly in search of a knockout. No, that he starts to hesitate by trying to land one good one like he did the first round. Before you know it, five rounds are going by. And the Macho man's get, get more confident. De La Hoya wants to fight with fury. He said, no more chess matches with southpaws. I did too much of that with Whitaker. He doesn't want to be drawn into a tactical battle with Camacho. He wants to overwhelm him with power and intensity. That's truly not the way to do it. You want to jab him with a big left hand, step back a little bit, and let make Camacho commit himself. You don't want to be the thorough aggressor. But why jab with a left hand no against a guy who's just going to block it with his right? It's not going to block it if you just go on and don't hesitate. Just jab. Remember, Camacho holding and the crowd responds. The southpaw, if you stand in your position, it's an unorthodox position for him also. Camacho doesn't grind or grab quite as much as he used to, but it's hard to turn a gazelle into a lion. You're giving him a little too much room. You're fighting exactly the fight that we don't want to fight, okay? You've got to pick up your pace. You've got to start working your jab. 
You're giving him a little too much room. That round could have went either way, to be honest with you, okay? You had to get pressure on him, but you got to pick up the pace. Don't look for no one shot. Look like you're trying to set back, waiting on one big shot to catch him with. Just start putting them together the same way you was in training. Yeah. See, just see, so waiting on one big shot is no good. You start putting them together, working your jab, working your jab. You got to pick up your pace on this guy, otherwise he's he coasting right into the groove that he won't. Let me tell you, he's starting, he's starting to fold here a little bit. He's starting to do some amateur things. Keep your hands up, keep your head moving, and stay low. Come and work. Okay, you make him work. Make him work. Make him work. Go ahead. When you hear the corner telling Camacho to make Oscar work, I believe it's their belief that Oscar will get tired in the second half or the third third of the fight if they can keep him busy. Well, they believe his punch output drops in the latter stages of the 12 round fights and they pointed out that it happened against Miguel Angel Gonzalez earlier this year. It wasn't necessarily the case against Whitaker where the punch output dropped in the middle rounds, but then Oscar was able to rebuild his tempo in the later rounds. Let me tell you, this is exactly the kind of fight Della Arya didn't want to get into with Macho. That's what Emmanuel Stewart told him between rounds. He didn't mince any words with the fighter. And it's hard to control a young fighter. You tell him what to do, then the next time you demand that he go out and do what you say and stop fighting his own fight. Emmanuel Stewart wants Della Arya to set it up with your left jab. Take your time. The punches will come. The jab is going to do all the harm. Della Hoya is not even paying any attention to a left jab at this point. He's pawing with the jab. He's trying to land straight rights and left hooks. Yeah, but meanwhile, George, I don't see Camacho landing anything. But he's landing the most important thing, time. The more relaxed, the more time goes by, it turns into a show. And well, that's you what finish. Camacho wants. You can finish that way, but somehow you got to score at some point. So, so you're thinking that De La Hoya might run down enough that Camacho can score more in the latter stages of the fight? Camacho is not interested in scoring this fight. He's going to let this guy get some of the steam out and start clocking him. He's as much interested in a knockout as De La Hoya is. Camacho, get out! Come on. Don't hold him! Whenever you're able to land a jab against a taller opponent, nothing but confidence starts to happen. Good Great right uppercut. hand lands for an uppercut, I should say, lands for De La Hoya. And that hurt Camacho. Round three, and while Camacho may have gotten into De La Hoya's head, he still hasn't done a lot of damage with his gloves. De La Hoya landing solid shots here and there, finding it difficult, as was the case against Whitaker, to land combinations, but fighting more with ferocity. Good body punches by De La Hoya. Excellent. That's what you want to do when you're fighting a, an old experienced fighter. You go down to his body to make sure you tip, keep a lot of that steam out of him in the latter round. Watch your head, don't hold him. Yeah, I'm by no means an expert like you, George, but I'm not sure the left jab will work all that well. I think the body shots could build up a lot of capital for De La Hoya as the fight goes off. Left jab always works. You just got to believe in it. Camacho isn't putting the slightest dent into De La Hoya. Yes, relax. Okay, you're fighting with one hand. You're fighting with your left hand. Let's let both hands start going now. Both hands go. When he gets close, you're going very defense. You're going defense. He's throwing a couple shots, and you're parrying him. You blocked him two punches. When he's on tight on you, come back hard with both hands, Hector. You understand? He's coming to you. Let's use your experience. You've been there. Sucker this guy in. He wants to keep coming and leaping. Go to him. Uh, they sucking in, spit it out. That's how you get fucking bumped. That pressure on him. All the, the way. champion on the attack, a good left uppercut inside, a body shot. And just missing short with the left hook. Once again, between rounds, De La Hoya refusing to sit down. He's only spent 40 seconds on the stool now out of an allotted three minutes. He's just very excited, very determined that he wants to win this fight. Put some hurt on Camacho. This is, none of this was planned, obviously. 
He's yep. just as eager as I've ever seen him. Come on, and break. Yep. Will that eagerness be a plus or a minus? We'll, well see as the fight develops. All the pluses so far are for the champion. And all, and all that Camacho is giving us is a lot of movement, pity pat punches. He's giving us the illusion of fighting back. He really isn't fighting back. In case you're interested in the content of some of Hector Camacho's constant bluster. Good straight left hand by Camacho. He said before the fight that he expected to stop De La Hoya in four rounds or less. Incidentally, De La Hoya wagered $200,000 against the chance to cut off Hector's forelock that he can win the fight. Camacho is effectively using his straight right jab. And whenever he wants to, he's able to land that... I mean, a straight right jab and throw that straight left hand. Good body punch. Right, left, left combination by De La Hoya. Camacho leaps back in with a jab. Camacho trying to time his jab now to take advantage of De La Hoya's rhythm. He lands a left as he steps in. Good. Now De La Hoya uses the jab to set up a left to the body. Then Oscar De La Hoya has a lot of firepower. And whenever you got tactics like Camacho, that power seems to interfere. It makes you say, well, maybe I shouldn't do this, that, and the other. And look for Camacho's jab. I think Delaway is always at his best when he remembers to punch to the body, and he's done that here in round four. Good straight left hand by Camacho again. Camacho getting much more aggressive in this round. You see Delahoya take a backward step, and you're going to see a different fight. You think Camacho believes at this point that he's tasted Delahoya's power? Not at all. He doesn't want to taste any more, but I can tell you that. But you want a puncher to follow you around. You make him throw his empty out his bottle, land, fall into the rope, things of that nature. But you got to catch him when he misses. Still, Oya getting better at cutting off the ring. He's following the, uh, Camacho around. He's just following him around. You don't want that. Is that because of the eagerness? Yeah, he's eager, and you can run right into a straight left hand. Once Camacho gets to keep his feet on the outside of Rick Delahoya's left foot, he's going to run right into one of those hard straight lefts by Camacho. Good body body shot punch. by Delahoya to punctuate round four. Four rounds in, and the battle has been joined by Camacho. Remember, don't blow your nose. How you feeling? Okay, just keep the same tempo going. A little bit more punches. You're not doing nothing wrong. We just got to keep a little bit more pressure on his ass, okay? And work your jab a little bit more. Keep working the jab. You're getting closer and closer to him each time as you're moving along. But work the jab just a little bit more. You're getting closer to him now. You're getting closer and closer and where you start catching up. He's getting in. Now, you gave you a seventh round. This is the fourth round coming up. Punches and combinations now. Two, three punches at a time. Just that, just that second and third punch is going to get him. You understand? Keep putting that pressure on him. Work that left hand. Bring the right hand. You rip a couple of those body shots, you'll catch him with that hook. Make him fight. Emmanuel Stewart, this is the fifth round. <laughs> Camacho's trainer, Pat Burns, was a member of the Olympic training staff back in 1992 and has worked a lot with De La Hoya in the gym. He says that as a result of that, he knows De La Hoya's weaknesses. Oscar says, sure he does. Well, Letterman, your score after four rounds. Larry, so far I've got it 40 to 36, four rounds to nothing. Oscar De La Hoya. I, I just think Oscar's hitting him too hard, and Hector hasn't impressed me with any power shots yet. But I'll tell you something. I think George Foreman said it. Oscar De La Hoya doesn't cut that ring off. This kid's running, and Oscar's making a mistake of chasing him. He should take that step to the side, cut that ring off, and whack him with a good left hook. Well, meanwhile, he's won all four rounds on both of our cards. Cut by De La Hoya, straight right hand inside by Camacho. Camacho really want to land that straight uh, left hand, but his foot is always on the inside of De La Hoya's left foot. Got to get it on the outside to get it. Right. Misses by inches because of the position of his feet. Right hand set 
picks up a left hook for De La Hoya and another straight right hand. Camacho backing away. Straight right hand and a left hook land again for De La Hoya. Let me tell you, that hurt Camacho. He took a hell of a punch there, George. De La Hoya dominating the fifth round with blistering power punches. And this straight right left hook combination is working for him in a way that we never saw it work against the other southpaw, Whitaker. Camacho is intending to make De La Hoya pay for these shots. And that could be a big mistake. He's not putting his foot on the outside of uh, De La Hoya's left foot, and he's standing too close. George, he's never wanted to commit to his punches because he doesn't want the incoming unless he's absolutely sure it won't be there. And he knows that there's going to be incoming from De La Hoya. In this fifth round, a perfect illustration of the problem that faces Camacho. He just sustains too much thunder from De La Hoya if he goes in close and gives himself a chance to land. Yeah, everything that De La Hoya throws hurts. But you got to take some chances. you really got to step up and take a chance or two. Well, when Camacho lost 12-round decisions to Julio Cesar Chavez and Felix Trinidad, his critics say that in the closing rounds of those fights, he didn't risk anything trying to win. He was satisfied to finish. He says it won't be that way tonight. Give me that water. Give me that water. Watch his mouth out. Deep breath, deep breath. Make sure stop bringing the uppercut. He's dropping down. Every time you throw the left hand, he's dropping down. You might even want to faint it, bring the left hand up when he dies underneath it, okay? It's the sixth round coming up. I can't believe it's the sixth round. Come Look at Oscar. Come here. Oscar. So you have, you're taking his left punch away from him, which is strictly only his left hand anyway. You're taking that away from him, so just keep the pressure on him. That's the only shot that he's got. You saw the connect percentage at 15% for Camacho. Camacho ain't going to beat anybody, landing 15% of his punches. De La Hoya, not up as high as he's been when fighting against conventional fighters, but doing better tonight than he did against the previous two southpaws, Jimmy Bredahl and Pernell Whitaker. Remember, beating out De La Hoya is getting past seven rounds. Then you can step up your attack. This guy is too powerful in the first five or six rounds. Now Camacho is sustaining a little jab here and there. Well, Camacho isn't fighting a 40-year-old or a 45-year-old guy now. Fighting a real fighter, a live fighter, a terrific young fighter. And the trouble is, once you're six or seven rounds down, you got to go for a knockout. He's not exactly a knockout puncher. Good gracious. Yeah, that's thunder. That is big stuff. The left hook was a monster. Well, it's because Camacho was standing around looking at things. It's because Camacho doesn't want to fight back, George. Body shots by Deloya. Ripping Camacho up. One minute into the sixth. Good, good punch by Camacho. Best punch of the fight for Hector Camacho momentarily stopped Deloy in his tracks. I think the problem Camacho is having is that he just does not want to give give way to Deloy. If he'd be his old self and stay out of the way. De La Hoya would not have landed so many punches, the punches that he's landed so far. He does not want to give this kid any confidence. Well, he's 35 years old, George. He can't fight the way he used to. He doesn't need to fight the way he used to. Now he needs to get in that punch. 35 years is the best age for a boxer. De La Hoya landing at a very high percentage in this round, and it's all heavy stuff. Although he's brought the jab back out a couple times. And there it is, using the jab tactically now, because he's able to land it over Camacho's dropping right hand. Uh, you know, Camacho looks to block the jab with his right, and so De La Hoya is just looping the hook right around it. Oscar also.
also occasionally leading to the body, and he's been able to land flush with most of those. Uppercut, backs Camacho all the way back to the rope. Camacho is thinking, this guy can't hit this hard. I know he can't. Yeah, but that's what they all think. Yeah, but you can't believe it, but it's actually there. Left to the body, right cross inside. This is a textbook round for Oscar De La Hoya, with the exception of that one hard left by Camacho. Now De La Hoya is starting to follow Camacho around with his right hand, right hand down. Hector Camacho may talk the talk. He hasn't walked the walk. That's the daddy to the so father. De Hoya, Oscar De La Hoya's dad at ringside. The man who groomed him as a fighter early on. And just to Joel's right, you saw the silver-haired gentleman, De La Hoya's close personal advisor, Mike Hernandez. You don't see that. In fact, all of your combinations are working. And what he's doing, he's doing the same shit as Ricky now. You, he's pulling straight out. Catch him on the tail end, you understand? Yeah, relax, relax. When he finishes up with everything, he's pulling straight out. Just keep leaping right to his ass, okay? Oscar De La Hoya is just giving a beating to Camacho here. A right high on the head. A left flush on the jaw. And then to the body. Very few fighters have been able to do this to, to Camacho. Practically nobody. In the sixth round, De La Hoya landed 32 power shots. Those are crosses, hooks, and uppercuts. And Camacho landed three. And now the uh, tape is loose on Hector Camacho's glove. So Richard Steele creates a momentary stoppage. This fight looks a little bit statistically like the Felix Trinidad fight for Camacho. He landed under 20% against Trinidad. He's landing under 20% again tonight against De La Hoya. You cut that and re it. Ice in the corner of the ring. Are they trying to buy some time for Camacho here? here. Whether stay they were corner, trying or not, they got it. Extra time for Camacho. De La Hoya okay. pacing angrily and anxiously in a neutral corner and now we go back to work keep a look, keep a look. past the midway point of the bout round seven of a schedule 12 it's been all de la Hoya so far right camacho tasted the knockout with sugar ray Leonard, and believe me he's standing close because he believes he can knock Camacho down. I mean, uh, Dallahoya down. Good sort of a cross left hand by uh, Camacho. You see he's missing by inches only because of the position of his right foot. George, he's never fought like this through most of his career. He really wants to win. So I don't know that he knows even how to fight at close quarters effectively. You talk about this guy's past, but he has a 19-year-old son. He's got a whole refueled family behind him now. Camacho really wants to win this thing, and he wants it bad. Well, if that's the case, if he's dug himself a big hole on the scorecards. Unable to handle De La Hoya in the first six rounds. You would have to assume that Camacho has fallen well behind. But as George tells you, he believes Hector is thinking knockout. Back in. Well, this is the round that Delaoya predicted that he would knock Camacho out by, but he's finding just like every other top fighter who has fought Camacho, that's very, very difficult to do. Knocking him out is not an easy proposition. Come on, guys, let's punch this work. Never been knocked out, and hey, let's give him some credit for a beard. He's taking big shots here tonight. Boy, he's taking some punches. The huge shots from Edwin Rosario back in 1986. Didn't go down. Been in against big punchers since then, like Trinidad. There's a big left hand. Big left hand by De La Hoya. Flush. And a lot of De La Hoya opponents have gone to sleep on that punch. But not Camacho. And Camacho is not running. He's standing close as if to say, I'll take another. Good uppercut, left him. uppercut. Great combination, uppercut hook by De La Hoya.
just busting through Camacho's guard. There were people after the Miguel Angel Gonzalez fight and the Whitaker fight who were suggesting, well, maybe Oscar isn't that big a puncher after all at 147. But tonight, he looks as though he's regained the power that made him such a force at 130, 135, and 140. It's because he's got his original trainer back into his corner. Robert Alcazar. That's right. Okay, we got five rounds to go. Okay? There ain't no bullshitting around. You want this title? You gotta go after this son of a bitch. You understand? You gotta go after him and you gotta fight him. You get in there and you work both hands. You're not gonna win a decision. It's gonna have to be a dog fight. You need to throw hard punches and you gotta throw them sharp and short. Okay? Let them go. You take it to another level. Okay? Work both hands, get inside, start working up. What is it, Dave Brown coming up already? He got by the seven. Put the shots together a little bit faster, but put some more power into him. You get a good stream to go in and then you take a little break and you let him have a vacation. This fight is turning into a one-sided massacre. Delahoya doing all of the damage with his left hand primarily. Sergeant's out! Let's see if, if Camacho can follow orders from his trainer, Patrick Burns, and whether he really wants to win. A little swelling around the left eye of De La Hoya. Camacho Whoops, looks great left the hand by. Yep, that was a great punch by Camacho, the straight left. Harold, we have seven rounds. How do you have them? Larry, so far, not so terribly difficult to score. 70 to 63, 7 to nothing, Oscar De La Hoya. He's landed all the power shots. Hector Camacho certainly has a big part, takes a great punch, but that doesn't count to the scoring. This fight is all De La Hoya, effective aggressive, this hot punching, ring generalship, everything. It's all De La Hoya. De La Hoya fights as though he doesn't believe there's any chance Camacho could hurt him, George. Yeah, he's not conserving his punches. He's not concerned about his conditioning in the latter round. It's going all out. He looks like Mark McGuire at a T-ball competition. Just swinging away. Camacho should understand that he's been taken care of as long as he keeps the fight close. Don't give this guy too much range to throw those powerful punches. Camacho starting to keep his elbows closer to his body as a result of the body punishment. De La Hoya has been meeting out. If Oscar keeps going to the body, he might find another chance to clean Hector up upstairs with one of those massive shots. So far, body punch by De La Hoya. Yep, that's what he's going to do. He's going to work oh. the body and make Camacho keep those arms down. So far, Camacho's been able to take all the punches to the head, and some of them have been very big. Camacho did not go to the body early. That's not good. He didn't land any big punches to De La Hoya's body. Camacho primarily is a backseat puncher. He wants the punch going away. He doesn't dig in and take chances. Camacho absorbed another combination. And there's another good uppercut. This is a sizzling performance by De La Hoya. He's done everything except score the knockout he might have hoped for at this point. At some point, he may think now to set it up on the jab and get this guy in the ladder round himself. Another good straight left Burn hand by Camacho. And he throws one punch at a time from outside Burn. and throws Stop into back, a clinch. Yeah, for fear that he may get caught with one himself. Right. Well, then, then you know, hey, no. there's nothing wrong to be, nothing wrong with being frightened of a puncher. No risk, no reward. Burn. Yeah, it, the only problem with it is it doesn't score. You can't win gambling with your hands in your pocket. Well, Mohammed did it with me. <laughs> Good round. This way I'm punches, combination, try to put them together. See, he's pulling out on every damn thing. That's why you can't catch it, because once you get it to go on, he's pulling away. So you got to lunge after him. You may have to miss him, but you're going to have to catch him on the tail end shots. Just leap after him after you, understand? Because he's pulling straight out. Once you start to hit him, he goes straight back, and then you can't catch him. Just leap after him and keep going. 
You just punch it with all the power you got with the combination this time. You're getting him to go on, but he gets off by pulling it out of range, and that way you can't get him. Everything hard this round. De La Hoya once again fighting a southpaw, having gone to school, fighting Pernell Whitaker. He is graduating against Hector Camacho. Macho is starting to get a little steaming. Punches have a little more snap to them this round than they did in the earlier round. He hasn't landed double figures in power Come shots on, in fight. any round. De La Hoya has landed on. double figures in power shots in every round. It's been a dominant performance so far for Oscar De La Hoya. In a bull fight, the Matador just does not come in until he knows that bull is weak. In some bull fights, the Matador doesn't even get the better of it. Keep it on, guys. Keep it on. Yeah, and, in, and in some fights, he just gets gored. You've heard Camacho's trainer, Pat Burns, asking for more punches, more intensity. Oh, that body punch hurt Camacho. It even made his legs draw up. Backing up, staying away. Emmanuel Stewart pointing out between rounds that it's tough to catch a guy and knock him out when he's not going to stay in your punching range. Camacho grabbed and held there after a vicious left hook to the ribcage. Hector not able to get much done offensively as Oscar De La Hoya continues to stalk. More body punching by De La Hoya. Another big hug from Camacho. Camacho probably never fought a guy in this kind of condition. Well, he fought Julio Cesar Chavez at the height of Chavez's career. Yeah, but not in and this Chavez kind of condition. Chavez did top him down with body punches just like this. Right. Watch your head. De La Hoya's in good shape. Of course, I'll have to agree with you. Chavez's habits outside the ring made it difficult for him to approach the kind of conditioning that De La Hoya reaches. Now, that straight left hand by Camacho made De La Hoya bend just a bit. Just a bit. Uppercut slams into Camacho, and with the right hand, De La Hoya knocks him down. Second dime in Camacho's career that he's ever been on the canvas. Some of the trademark arrogance and cockiness seeping out of Camacho now as he grabs and holds on. Hard left hand by Camacho as De La Hoya came in with his hands down. What you want him to do is to walk into you and keep your balance so you can land a good one on him. But yes, Hector George, Camacho but does best is sell fights and survive against top fighters, period. Finally, Camacho got, got caught with so many punches, a fusillade, but down he goes for the second time in his career. De La Hoya up on his feet as we watch this replay. He wants to get Camacho out of there. De La Hoya waving his hands at the crowd and jacking them up as he gets ready to come out for the tent. There's such a thing as the shot pheasant syndrome. The pheasant has been shot, but his arms are still flapping. The pheasant is dead, but he doesn't know it yet. And that's Hector Camacho right now. So will Camacho back up and try to survive, or will he stick with his plan to try to win the fight, shortening the distance as he's doing now? 
George, I know you believe he still wants to win the fight. No doubt about it. Now, you can say what you want. You get knocked down by a big puncher like Della Aya, and you get up and you turn aggressive. You got to give this guy some credit. Credit. Well, he's a great survivor, George. There's no, no doubt about it. He's going forward now. It may cost him his, his neck, but he's coming forward. The worst it would cost him is his 68 fights without ever being knocked out record. De La Hoya just punishing Camacho to the body. If De La Hoya wanted to hurt Camacho, this is more devastating than a knockout would have been. You're right. A knockout would have been better. If these accumulative punches accumulate, have, no, have a way of doing more damage than a knockout. And so much of it to the body. Which is your insurance policy that if the fight goes on, this guy doesn't get stronger. No holding, right? This is the Oscar De La Hoya that Oscar De La Hoya wants to be. A vicious, merciless power puncher. Hasn't wasted, wasted any time on his defense tonight. That's not where it's at anymore. It's not about being Willie Pep. It's not about crouching and bending from the waist. It's not about working behind the jab anymore. It's about unloading left hooks and straight right hands and uppercuts and vicious body shots and establishing himself as the man in the ring. That's what he wants to do with Emmanuel Stewart guiding him as a trainer and Robert Alcazar, as you pointed out, back in his corner. It's all about not wasting all of his energy in training camp. He didn't spar a lot, so he's got a lot tonight. There should be a song called Run Camacho Run. now it's not over till the end of the 12th round you understand you got two rounds now what are the you odds that camacho deep lets him cut it off deep breath deep breath start bringing that left hand up bring the left hand up you're still shooting over bring the left hand up let both hands go stay in there tight let it fly you need to knock out hold the ground keep pushing and every time you finish up his legs is weak so when you finish up with punches always keep pushing him back Okay, if you go all out this round, you can end it, I believe. I believe he's ready to go this round. But you've got to push all the way through. If you dog yourself, he'll give it up this round. Let's try to get him out of here. This obviously is very personal for Oscar De La Hoya. And another loose tape on Camacho's tape. right glove. Well, you heard Emmanuel Stewart say to Deloy, I think he we might be ready to go tape. this round. Will this okay. extra 10 or 15 if second rest so, make a difference? Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's go, time. And some great punters who have tried to knock out Hector Camacho. Felix Trinidad and Edwin Rosario foremost among them. Right, right, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Watch that, watch that here. Let him go, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. De La Hoya up on his feet to start the 11. Boy, you get up on those toes and you think a guy's thinking, I got him tired now, and he starts bouncing, that's frightening. Harold Letterman, how do you have it scored through 10? Jim, certainly Hector Camacho hasn't got off the schneid. 10 rounds to nothing, 100 to 89. Oscar De La Hoya, for sure, he deserves an extra point in the ninth round for the knockdown. For sure, he's won every round. The only thing we can say is Hector Camacho takes some punch, got some heart, because I don't know what he's doing on his feet. But it's all Oscar De La Hoya. The whole break. Little bump on the bridge of De La Hoya's nose now. But obviously, he's oblivious to all that. 
as he pounds away at Camacho as though Camacho's a heavy bag. Oh, that left hook to the body by De La Aya. That hurts. Ooh, you want to drop your elbow and just leave your your left elbow, right elbow down there. It, it makes a noise like a George Foreman yeah. left hook to the body. Yeah. And you and you that bounce ball, around thinking, I'm not going to pick my elbow up again. <laughs> Boy, it's hard to right guard up your face. Cut. Uppercuts have been tremendous for De La Hoya. Left hook against the southpaw, about as good as it can be. Body punches all night long. Virtuoso performance. De La Hoya has never knocked a fighter out past the 10th. Camacho, as we told you before, has never been knocked out. And Oscar wants this so badly, he can taste it. Oh, that hurt the knee. De La Hoya wincing as he got off the canvas. I the didn't knee. know if, he, if it was his knee or his yeah. shoulder. That yeah, was a hard tackle. Yeah, that knee, that knee. That was a very hard tackle. Break! Okay, this is the last thing I'm saying about the holding, okay? Hard left hand in there for Camacho, his best punch in a few rounds. De La Hoya momentarily slowed, coming off of the big tackle. Camacho still believes he can get in that one good shot. I think it might take more than one. You saw it right there. You can still do it. That was a nice left cross. Oh, you're breathing down. That was one of the best left hands you've thrown all That was a hell of a left hand. That was a hell of a left hand. It's there. His right hand is down here. You've been working your ass off on that, Hector. It's there. Get Look, get in tight, get in tight, and throw it hard. And turn it over. Every now and then you throw it. You all right? You didn't hurt yourself. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, I heard the shoulder. Yeah, sure did. Don't worry about too much. Okay, you gotta finish up strong, okay? Don't finish up strong. Hey, man, strong. Yeah. Now you'll see the tackle and that hurt De La Hoya's shoulder as he falls on his left shoulder. This is the fourth and final round. Watch to see if Oscar's still able to throw left hook. And he can. He throws a left hook to the body hard there. So, for the moment, the shoulder doesn't seem to impair him as the 12th round begins. You heard Pat Burns in Camacho's right, corner right, saying that right left cross is right there. You landed one. Now get him close and land another and turn it over. He did once knock out a fighter named Juan Nazario back at 135 pounds with one perfectly thrown left-hand shot. Boy, left hook. Hector Camacho is a survivor. And he is Another really left hook to the body because he has taken a woeful whipping tonight. Well, I guess De La Hoya is going to be disappointed if he can't score the knockout he so badly wanted, but he's done everything else but. He has nothing to be disappointed about. Perhaps he will be. Even at this point, when he knows he's ahead, he's still trying for a knockout. He just did a terrible beating to Camacho. And I think he'll sleep well on that. Any chance, Larry? Do you think there's any chance that Camacho's going to tell you he won the fight? Come on, you No, but he'll go out and beat 20 guys named Eeny, Meeny, Miney, and Mo, and, and one or two guys who are 40 or 50, and, go and tell the world, I got an 80 and 4 record. I survived with, with Delaware. I want another big fight. And then he'll get beaten the same way. 
time, 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 go to corner, go to corner, one point, one point, one point, the hold, deducting a point from Camacho for holding, that'll make it even more one-sided on the scorecard. does Oscar De La Hoya want a knockout over Hector Camacho 35 seconds to go Great. good right left hand by Camacho yep. you better straighten up Oscar oh come on George Camacho couldn't knock him out with one punch if he had a blackjack in him yeah, you got a point there. Come on! But that point was taken away. <laughs> and the fight ends appropriately with Camacho reeling from a right hand. Okay. Devastating root-going performance for Oscar De La Hoya. Perhaps the greatest suspense that attends the three scorecards now. Did any of the judges find a way to give Camacho a round? Jim, if you remember what I said on the walk-in for Camacho, walking in and getting all that money, that was his victory. Yep. Let's take a look at the final scorecard of Harold Letterman, and this one I'm pretty sure is a whitewash. <laughs> Jim, 120-106, every last round for Oscar De La Hoya. Certainly a 10-8 round in the 12th when referee Richard Steele took away a point. Jim, I gotta tell you something. If Oscar De La Hoya would have been hurt seriously enough in the 11th round when he went down because he was tackled, it would have gone to the scorecards. The winner would have been the fighter who was ahead on the scorecards. So he couldn't have lost that fight had he gone down and injured his shoulder seriously. I just wanted to mention that because it is important. It may have happened. But anyway, tonight, 120, 106, 12 rounds to nothing, Oscar De La Hoya. And let's quickly take a look back at highlights of these 12 rounds to give you an idea of how Harold Letterman scored it so one-sidedly in round one. De La Hoya hurting Camacho with several punches, left hooks, and straight rights. Round six, more of the same. De La Hoya with a right, then a left hook, vicious body shots. It was that way all the way through. Until finally, in round nine, Hector Mato Camacho went down to the canvas for only the second time in his career. This time, bulled to the canvas on a rush of power punches by De La Hoya, rights, lefts, and finally Camacho down after absorbing a cosmic amount of punishment to that point. And in the 12th round, when Camacho did that for the umpteenth time, referee Richard Steele deducted a point from Hector. It was all Oscar De La Hoya. And now let's go up to Michael Buffer and find Ladies out and how one-sided these scorecards the are. Wiser scorecards. Chuck Jaffa scores the belt, 120 to 105. John Keane, 120 to 106. And Anek Hong Kong Kong scores at 118 to 108. For the winner, by unanimous decision, and still WBC welterweight champion of the world, the Golden Boy, Oscar De La So the laughably one-sided unanimous decision made interesting only by the fact that one of the three WBC appointed judges, a gentleman from Thailand, was able to give two rounds to Hector Macho Camacho, which tells you that he has an interesting view of the sport. Final punch stat numbers from CompuVox reflecting the one-sidedness of the bout that you saw. De La Hoya landing three times as many punches as Camacho, throwing 63 more, and landing at almost three times as high a percentage rate. In the power punch category, even more one-sided, De La Hoya landing 340 of them, Camacho never landing as many as 10 power punches in any given round, Camacho only throwing 139 crosses, hooks, and uppercuts, De La Hoya throwing nearly 700 of them. And then after the fight, our Larry Merchant in the ring spoke to both the winner and the loser.
Thank you guys. Congratulations, Oscar. Is this as satisfying as any victory you've had? Well, it's very satisfying, but uh, like I said, oh my gosh, I wanted that knockout so bad. And um, I'm just very fortunate that I took the win. Hector Macho Camacho, I give him a lot of credit. He's a good boxer. Even though he holds a little too much, but uh, it was a good experience for me. Oscar, you won every round. <laughs> you knocked him down. You hurt him. That even seems bigger than a knockout. I think so because he did suffer for the whole 12 rounds and um, my intentions were to uh, put more pressure, but uh, hey, I must have, might have underestimated Camacho a little too much, but we got the win. We made him suffer all 12 rounds and I'm very happy. Your left shoulder crashed into the canvas okay. when he tackled you in the 11th round. Is it all right? It's okay. I landed on my shoulder and it gave me a little bit of problems. Um, it was hard for me to lift it up uh, after that, but uh, I was very happy with the performance. He was a bit rough. He did hit me with a few headshots while well, he comes in like that, but uh, I'm very happy. I give him a lot of credit. Credit for what? Credit for uh, taking selling the, the f and selling the fight. Well, he did a good promotion, but uh, he did take a good punch, and um, he deserves uh, all the credit in the world. Did he ever hurt you? Because I see they're putting an end swell on your left eye now. Yeah, he did. Uh, we did clash head of heads a few times. Since I'm taller, he came in with his head, so it was very difficult for me to uh, move away from that punch, from his third punch, which is the head. But um, I'm okay. Were you surprised that he was able to survive so many solid shots, including the three or four that knocked him down? I was very surprised, actually, because I was throwing a lot of power punches. I was very ready for this fight. I was um, putting a lot of pressure. I, put a sh I should have put more pressure the way Emmanuel Stewart and Robert Alcazar were telling me to. But um, hey, if, I'm, if I made mistakes, it's all my fault. Is it fair to say that you went to school on what happened in the Whitaker fight? so that you could fight him the way you want, this left-hander the way you wanted? Well, when we fight him again, if we fight him again, it will be a whole different story. I mean, uh, I'm getting used to fighting the softball fighters. I'm going to keep on training for a softball fighter because I know I'm going to be facing more softball fighters down the road because I dodge no one. And um, I'm just, I'll just be ready for anyone. I'll be uh, in the best shape of my life for every single fight and always, always win for myself, win for the family and for all my fans. On a, on, a, on a grade of 1 to 10, rate your performance. I give my, myself maybe like a, a 9. I could have done a little better. More pressure, more power punches, more combinations. Um, but like I said, softball fighters are very difficult, and I give him a lot of credit. Thank you very much, Oscar. Congratulations again. Thank you. Hector, are we going to get a ritual cutting of your hair, or is he already hey, you unmanned you? I think I earned the skeever, right? <laughs> but if he wants me, grab me. We made the bet. Uh, he grab me. <laughs> All right, has somebody got his scissors here? <laughs> has somebody got his scissors so that we can see this? Uh, why will it? Why will it? You want to do it here? You made a bet. Hey, go for no, it. No, bring it You a man. Huh? You a man. Oh, you jealous. You a man. Oh, you really want it, huh? You really want it, right? You made a bet. You made a bet. What's up, man? No. No, I was I earned it, right? You're smart. You're right. You earned it. Smart fight. I earned it. Smart fight. Smart. I think I'll come back. Was he just... Too strong, too quick for you. You know, he's been busy, you know. He came off Chavez, he came off Whitaker, he just, just came off a fight, you know. This kid is a very good student in boxing. Uh, as you know, I've been fighting five, man, in five months, I just got off a good fight with, with Sugar Ray. I came down good. But I think what I'll do is I go, I go up to uh, 154 and get the champion then. Was he, was he just he everything. too uh, quick, too young, too yeah. strong for you? He, like I say, he was very sharp today. How, bad, how badly did he hurt you? Cause, well, because you've never taken a beating like this. No, but uh, like you said, he earned it, he fought it, and he won it. But I'll keep my tail, <laughs> and I think I'm trying for that rematch. I ain't too, Larry. A rematch with who? Uh, I want to get the 54 champion for today. My cast, since he talks a lot of shit, and he's been teasing me, I'll take that belt and then come back to a rematch. Thank you very much. You're still selling, Oscar. Yeah, I'm coming back, Larry. I'm coming back. Hector. Okay.